Hi friends, we are going to see December month Yojana, the title Atman Nirbar Bharat. So in that uh, we are going to see three articles. One is uh, GI tagging of rural products, page number 7 and Hargar Jal, page number 23 and reviving MSME, page number 41. So these are three articles we are going to see in uh, today's uh, video. Okay. So we go for the first article, GI tagging of rural products. So we will classify as paragraph 1, paragraph 2 and paragraph 3. So in paragraph 1, so what the article says is, uh, the present international framework on geographical indication derives strength from article 22 of TRIPS, that is trade related aspects of intellectual property rights. So GI tagging has its origina origination based on article 22. Article 22 of so, so Article 22 of TRIPS. So what we can understand from this is uh, after we came into the process of globalization and globalization becomes a dominant factor in the world. So that comes a necessity to protect products based on geographical indication. So this we can relate with the mains point. So any question regarding globalization and how it impacts our uh, local economy or uh, country's economy. So to give an advantage for local products, we have a global agreement based on trips which creates the concept of geographical indication. We still need to see what a geographical indication means. This we need to clearly understand. It's an outcome of globalization. Geographical indication is the outcome of globalization. So, what is GI they have given? Geographical indication. Indication which identify a goods as originating in a territory of a member or a region or locality in that territory where a given quality, reputation or the characters of the good is essentially attribute of geographical origin. So, what is geographical indication is? It is regarding the members of trips originating in a territory or region. So, there should be some geographical identity for this. So, that product should originate from certain regions of the members or some territory of the members with, with certain characters like quality, quality, reputation, quality, reputation and other characters. They have given other characters. Other characters as attribute. All these are because of attribute of that specific geographical origin. So the products should have a certain quality and reputation, and how this comes is based on the geographical origin, the place where it gets its uniqueness. That's a geographical indication, and please understand this especially for products. So geographical indication is given only for products, not for services. That you need to keep in mind and that is paragraph 1. So, paragraph 1 says what is the reason for creating geographical indication and what is geographical indication means and the reason for creating geographical indication we can relate with globalization outcome and what is geographical indication? It is a product with the quality or reputation. That quality and reputation is essentially based on the place of origin. So, right now in India we have a lot of uh, products coming under GI tag, right? So, a good example of this. Uh, uh, for example, Odisha's Rasgulla or uh, Kanjiburam silk of Tamil Nadu. So, every state has certain uh, products under GI tags, right from Jammu and Kashmir to Tamil Nadu. So, that can be your uh, plums questions based on that year which got GI tag, which comes in newspaper. You need to understand the characteristic of that products. So, that can also be a plums question. Okay. Then, paragraph 2 says, what is GI tag and what is not the thing you can claim under GI tag? So, GI tag is not a property right given to an individual. So, GI tag is given to a region for its products. It is not given to an individual. It is an attribute of goods or services. Given services, it is not specific to a region which allows every producer in specified region to use the GI tag as long as the quality of GI goods is similar to the specified qualities of identified product of said region. So, in paragraph 2, what are the things you cannot claim under GI tag? GI tag is not a individual property right. 
So it's not an individual property, right? It's given for the collective region. And you can claim the GI tag when you match with the quality or reputation which you claim to get the GI tag. So assume that if you're going for uh, Odisha Rasagulla, so there are certain process being followed, certain raw materials are being used, correct? So if you are able to do the same thing, then you can claim the GI tag. It's not that all Rasagulla of uh, 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 Odisha uh, can come under the category. It's based on the process and all those qualities which you match it, then you ca can have the GI tag. So that's the point they say and also the most important thing is it's not an individual property rights. It's given for the region. And they next have given in uh, paragraph 2, next they also given about, uh, so given about uh, globally what is the number of GIX being given. So, so GI is given mostly for Germany. So if you take Germany, they have around uh, 14 to 89 products under GI tag. Next come China, Hungary. So China have 7,834. In this we can say about India, US and India as they have given. So India has 361. So in India only 361 products come under GI tag. And please understand India is a oldest civilization and lot of things in India especially in the concept of products we are doing for uh, thousands of years. And this clearly shows that there is a great potential for India to go for this GI tag. So first we need to understand the origin of the products and that has a huge benefit for getting this GI tag. Once you have a GI tag, it's a greater possibility for commercialization of that product and having a global reach. Okay, That's the thing we need to understand here. When compared with uh, uh, Germany, we can see that how much uh, scope we got in India. Okay. Next thing is, uh, right now, which are the products? In paragraph 3, you can see that which are the products in global level, we have greater GI tag. Mostly, the 56 percentage is based on wines. So, based on wines and spirits. Wines and spirits, 56 percentage. And next thing is, followed by agriculture commodities. That is, uh, 34 percentage is agriculture commodities. Agri products. And 3 percentage is for handicrafts. So this clearly shows that uh, right now in global level, we know Germany has a dominant in uh, GI tags thing and European culture where they have this uh, concept of wine and dine and all those things. So ultimately that have a hugest concentration, just our understanding of it. And agriculture contribute 33, 34 percentage. So our India is the strongest country and we are doing it for thousands of years. There is a potential for that to catch up. So next thing is handicrafts. So these three, 34 percentage, 3 percentage. If India's contribution increases, probably in global level GI tags proportion can change. So that is in uh, first page of GI tagging. So next we go for the next page of uh, GI tagging, page number 8 in Yojana. So paragraph 1, so paragraph 2, 3, 4 and 5. So in this, uh, when you go for uh, paragraph 1, so these are some factual informations about GI tagging in India. So Darjeeling tea in 2004, so 2004, so Darjeeling tea got the first GI tag in India and it has a different uh, variant in that, so uh, black, green and white tea, so all got GI tags. Okay. So that's one factual information. Next thing is regarding paragraph 2, state specific they have given. So Karnataka, so Karnataka, so got around 47 products and Tamil Nadu got around 39 products. So we can see that GI tagging in India has been concentrated in South India, where there is a greater scope for North India and especially if we go for Northeastern states. So this can also be a driver of the economy. So we'll see that, so there are points based on it. So that is in paragraph. These are factual information while writing answers you can use it or this can be also be a prelims question especially Darjeeling T. Next thing is paragraph 3. So what the article says is registration of goods under GI tag does not give any benefits for the particular uh, product. So until there is some enforcement mechanism. So to make GI tag successful. First one is registration. So you want to register with the uh, government that it has a unique uh, uh, mechanism or unique product and which government will uh, cross check it and if they are 
able to understand the authenticity of that product, they give the GI tax. There's a process for all those things. And that comes under reg registration. And apart from registration, next most important thing is enforce mechanism. So once we get the GI tag, the real products need to get that tag so that it can be uh, uh, getting a premium in the market. And apart from this, uh, traceability. And the next most important thing is traceability. So there should be some traceability mechanism for the product. So mostly these uh, products are uh, indigenously made um, made by a few families or concentrated by few families or they don't have a proper formal mechanisms. So there comes the question of uh, the genuinity of the product. So government needs to be keen on creating this traceability mechanism. So right from the origin to the end, uh, how this products travel and if a consumer buys the product, he need to know that he is buying the genuine GI products. Geography indicated uh, products. So that comes the concept of traceability. Right now in India, they have created a lot of initiative for that. For example, Hotty Net. So there is a traceability for horticulture products. Basmati Net and Meat Net. All are created by Ministry of Agriculture and APIDA. APIDA means Agriculture and Processed Food Products Export Development Authority. So, uh, so government is moving that di right direction. So that is both paragraph 3 and paragraph 4. So this is more related about traceability. Next thing is paragraph 5. So, recently government want to give greater focus on GA products. So, they have given tagline also. So, GA products, they have given tagline, so which comes into the next page. So, when you go for the next page, uh, so given taglines for uh, GA products. So, if you go for this uh, first one, so they have given tagline for GI products, invaluable treasures of incredible India. So, that is a tagline. So, invaluable treasures of, uh, so invaluable treasures of incredible India. So, I am just giving you a short form. So, invaluable treasures of incredible India and uh, even other ministries the bank roped in, correct, Ministry of uh, Railways and Ministry of Civil Aviation to uh, display the GI tag products. So, this helps in domestic consumption itself. So, that is the thing what uh, government is trying to do. So, that is given in paragraph 1. And in paragraph 2, so regarding Indian foreign trade policy. So, foreign trade policy for 5 years 2021 to 26. So, we are in 2022. So, where we want to achieve US dollar of 1 trillion in exports. So, we want to achieve, uh, this is the target given by the government under the trade policy, you want to achieve uh, 1 trillion dollar exports by year of 2025. And what government feels is, there is a greater potential of this GI tag products, especially agriculture products. So, GI tagged agriculture products. So, agri products have greater scope to achieve this objective. So, government is very keen on it. So, we know that uh, we have a natural advantage in this uh, areas. So, we just need to identify the products and uh, previously see what are the things, registration and uh, enforcement and traceability. If that is being properly done, so there is a greater scope of uh, reaching this trade policy target of uh, 1 trillion exports by 2025. So, they say GI, GI is one such area. Okay. So, it all comes under Atma Nirbhar Bharat. Okay. And in paragraph 3 and uh, so they are also creating online platform for uh, GA products. So GA products online platform. So online platform to market all those GA products that is being created by the government. So uh, next thing is uh, page number 10, paragraph 1 and paragraph 2. So in paragraph 1, so to promote this uh, GA products government is focusing on cluster approach. So, cluster approach is based on this one district, one product. So, right now we can see our Prime Minister speaking about this in uh, Monkey Bath, where each district need to identify one product and they need to focus on that product which has a greater scope for export. So, one district, one product is similar to this uh, idea of promoting this GI products only. So, especially you can see that uh, this is an idea already done by Japan under the name called One Village, One Product. 
So that is what India is trying to replicate as one district, one product. Whereas in Tha uh, Thailand, Thailand it is called as uh, one Thamban and one product. So this Thamban is nothing but sub district. So what Thailand did is by studying Japan as one uh, one village one product. So they try to have their own version of it and they focused on district level whereas India is focusing on sub district level sorry the Thailand is focusing on sub district level where India is focusing on district level one district one product. So one district one product again we can relate with GI. So government is keen on uh, promoting this GI through this one district one product. And also we can see that uh, so what are other measures need to be done for promoting GI. So GI promotion measures. So promotion measures. So which are those things are uh, first one is uh, creating infrastructures. So basic infrastructures need to be created. So such as custom clearances. So custom clearances. Then only we can export the products and uh, laboratory test facilities. So laboratory test facilities need to be created and packing houses, packing houses and cooling facilities. So all this need to be done. Then only we can focus on uh, GI products to be an export commodity. So these are all the suggestions given to the system what need to be done. And finally last one is uh, paragraph 1. What it speaks is uh, right now in India for GI products. So there are three products which has a greater, greater mechanisms and process which is able to enjoy the benefits of globalization and reach global markets. So what are those three products is one is Basmati rice, so Basmati rice of India right now which is being exported to across the world and next thing is Nasik grapes. So Nasik grapes is another one and Darjeeling tea. So Darjeeling tea. So these are the three products right now which is having the all necessary conditions to reach the global markets and government has also made all the necessary steps for it. So, so what they are saying is, especially the author is saying is, based on this case study of Basmati, Nasik and Darjeeling, so government can concentrate on other products. So by studying these uh, uh, three things, they say that, uh, so value chains. So right now for this we have a global value chains for these things. So ultimately they are reaching to the global markets. So similar to that we can focus on other products. So that is a, a, a suggestion given in this particular uh, paragraphs. So this regarding GI tax. Next we go for Har Gar Jal. So in this we go for paragraph 1, so paragraph 2 and paragraph 3. In paragraph 1, they say about the background of this Jal Jeevan mission. So Jal Jeevan mission came in India in the year of 2019. So came in the year of 2019 and especially this is focusing on, so it is regarding water, especially drinking water. And the primary focus of this Jal Jeevan mission is to improve quality of life improving quality of life and also public health. So this is the primary focus of this uh, Jaljeevan mission. So that is being implemented in partnership with state government, implemented in partnership with state government and uh, so target year for this is 2024. So the target year is 2024 for this particular mission and what the target they are saying is first and fo foremost thing is. Uh, Portable tap water supply. So, portable tap water supply and uh, prescribed quality and quantity. So, they have a, qu a quantity aspect that is 55, sorry, 55 liters per day and quality is reg reg regarding uh, 
numbers of 10500 just we need to check this so this is the promise made by the government to under this Jaljeevan mission to provide drinking water and especially with the time frame of 2024 and with this quality and quantity and please understand uh, when you take this portable tap water supply this has another important feature and we take this uh, Jaljeevan mission especially if you think from rural perspective and we know that in, our fa in, our, in any rural family women is responsible for water and they need to spend a lot of time to focus on collecting drinking water. So they need to walk for um, uh, kilometers to fa fetch the drinking water and if government is able to achieve this by 2024 and reaching all the rural areas especially rural families by this particular scheme. So there is a greater empowerment of women especially women does not need to spend their uh, 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 time on walking to collect the waters because water will reach to them. So this is another po point of empowerment by this particular mission because uh, women is most responsible for drinking water in any rural family okay especially from rural perspective. Next thing is paragraph 2 regarding this particular mission. So gra gram panchayat and especially this village water and sanitation committee. So village water and sanitation committee or Pani Samiti. So Pani Samiti. So they are responsible for planning implement so planning sorry planning implementation. So planning implementation to manage operate and maintain. So you can see the holistic aspect of uh, water manage drinking water management is in the hands of uh, Gram Panchayat especially this uh, Pani Samiti or uh, village water and sanitation committee. So here we, here we can see that uh, there is a greater empowerment of people. So they are taking the leadership role for uh, drinking water in rural areas that is given in paragraph 2 and in paragraph 3. So that Jaljeevan mission is highly integrated with 73rd amendment act that is nothing but uh, panchayat system and uh, it is uh, Jaljeevan mission is entirely focused on decentralized so decentralized okay sorry so decentralized demand driven so demand driven and community managed community managed community managed water supply program water supply program and please understand these are the keywords right now in our development process decentralized demand driven and community managed here all we can relate with this this one the previous point village water and sanitation committee or pa pani samiti we can see that they are responsible for planning implementation managing operating and maintaining all we can relate with decentralization demand driven demand driven is nothing but people decide what need to be done and community managed ultimately all these are managed by the people themselves so this this is the most important thing where right now we can see that it's it's if you want to put in one term we call it as inclusive growth right now jaljeevan mission is one such example of inclusive growth so next thing is uh, so paragraph 1, 2 and paragraph 3. So in this uh, paragraph 1, so it also uh, implements water source augmentation, strengthening water conservation, grey water treatment and reusage of treated grey waters for this purpose programs for capacity building of members as Gram Panchayat or Village uh, Water and Sanitation Committee are organized so that it can work as a local local water utility for assured service delivery on long term and regular basis. So what we can understand this is, so they are going for capacity building. So capacity building of Panchayat that is Village Panchayat and a Gram Panchayat and Village Water and Sanitation Committee and especially for water source augmentation they want to identify what are local water sources that can be translated into drinking water purpose and all strengthening water conservation measures so that it can helps in uh, regenerating ground water level and apart from this grey water treatment, grey water treatment is nothing but uh, reusable waters. 
So we can see that uh, we are using water for domestic purpose and uh, any industrial purpose. I'm saying what is grey water means that can be uh, recycled. That's called grey water. So all these are being taken into consideration to uh, under Jal Jeevan Mission and where for that capacity buildings done for gram panchayat or village water and sanitation committee members. So ultimately, what a purpose is? It should be more uh, sustainable program where people have the corresponding knowledge especially for running this program. So that is the uh, focus of this paragraph 1. And again in paragraph 1 out of 6, uh, uh, six lakh revenue villages. So right now we have seen that Pani Samti has been created approximately around 4 lakh villages. So here we can clearly understand that uh, there is a greater demand for drinking water in rural areas. So that is the reason you can see that a lot of villages are coming forward to create these committees. So, so around 6 lakh villages, around 6 lakh revenue villages, so 3 lakh villages has created this village water and sanitation committee. This clearly shows the success of this program where uh, uh, 3.9 very precise, so 3.9 or 4 lakh villages. This clearly shows the success of this program, how uh, uh, villages are very keen for this program and we saw in the previous, uh, previous pages demand driven. So here we can see that there is a greater demand for this particular program. Next thing is paragraph 2. So in paragraph 2, so villages where ground water, ground or surface water of good quality is available is sufficient in sufficient quantity, single village scheme are planned and executed for the most preferred option. So this is one another character of this particular scheme. So what we call it a single village scheme. So a single village scheme, what a single village scheme is, if that village is self-sufficient with the water, especially with the quality of drinking water and sustainability of that particular uh, water source for long duration as a drinking water, it all comes under single village scheme. So that is one important character that is given in paragraph 2. Next thing is paragraph 3 regarding Sansat Adash Gram Yojana. So this is majorly focused on SC and ST majority villages. This scheme is entirely focused on SC and ST majority villages. And what they found out is the most important fact which we need to focus on this particular uh, information is we can go for this uh, aspirational districts. So aspirational districts are nothing but uh, the name given by the government for uh, less developed districts. So they doesn't want to call them as underdeveloped. So they want to give some uh, positive uh, connotation for that. So they have given this aspirational district as a tag. So before this Jaljeevan mission, so only seven percentage got drinking water. So before this Jaljeevan mission came into picture, right now that has increased to thirty-seven percentage. So right now in aspirational district, drinking water is the key <coughs> criteria for development because in multi-dimensional poverty. So one important uh, indication of poverty is uh, health which is also a determinant based on water. So we can see that uh, under aspirational district uh, after this Jaljeevan mission, we can see that drinking water is taken to the percentage of 37. <coughs> that is one important indicator and ne next thing is regarding health. So, so villages where we have this Japanese encephalitis affected districts. So mostly it is concentrated in North India, especially Bihar, UP and all. And where before the scheme only 2 percentage of villages got this uh, drinking water facility, right now that is increased to 38 percentage. So this is all based on this uh, particular scheme, Sansat Adash Grams Yojana. And also the other most important thing is uh, it also promotes the rural economy that is given in the paragraph 3. So, uh, so we can see that. Uh, so, village water and sanitation committee prepares five year village action plan. So, five year village action plan for water and sanitation. This gives a sustainability, grey water management, and water conservation works. So, ultimately, we can see that uh, this, com uh, this uh, committee, village water and sanitation committee, want to create a five year plan. So, there is a uh, time horizon of five year what need to be done in the village especially for drinking water and water conservation measures are taken for that and uh, grey water treatment is taken for that. This all creates a 
local economic opportunities that's nothing but they are giving us bo uh, boosting rural economy and also we can see that in the 15th finance commission and the 15th finance commission 60 percentage of the total grants 50 16 percentage 60 percentage of grants goes to local rural bodies so when these plans are properly executed ultimately that drives the rural economy that's a point the, uh, the article says next paragraph 1 2 So, in this they also given some uh, informations regarding financial outlays under Jaljeevan mission around 3 lakh crores, 3.6 lakh crores are being allocate, allocated for drinking water facility uh, out of which 2 lakh crore will be from central government. So, we already saw that it is a combined mission of union government and state government and uh, very close to 4 lakh crores are committed for this Jaljeevan mission until 2024 in that uh, 2 lakh crore will be allocated by the central government. Next thing is, uh, next important in paragraph 2 is, so in this uh, Gram Panchayat or Village Water and Sanitation Committee, so we have members. So members and what this particular scheme is doing is particular mission is doing is so they are going to provide skill training so they are providing skill training under this particular mission so what are the skill training is one is mason plumber fitter fitter and uh, electrician so, this is a skill training provided for this uh, village water and sanitation committee members. So, what we need to understand from this paragraph is uh, right now this mission is also transforming the rural uh, human resources. So, we already we have a program called Skill India which is being uh, attached with this. We can see that uh, people are trained on these particular areas because uh, water, uh, uh, drinking water requires all this uh, skill set for the to be operated. So, this being trained to the local people, especially rural people, automatically it creates skilled personals in rural and village level, which creates the demand for their trade. So, this we can see that what the government is trying to link the scheme with other schemes of the government. So, that, that is given, that is capacity building of uh, uh, the rural areas and, uh, and this ultimately results in emerging rural economy. So, that is the point in paragraph 2. What we need to clearly understand here is uh, how government is trying to create an infrastructure, social infrastructure and physical infrastructure and under the concept of sustainability where they are skilling the rural people in this particular uh, trades. So, ultimately the program can also be sustained for longer durations and another thing it also creates opportunity for people to upgrade their skill set ultimately resulting in economic opportunities and standard of life. Next paragraph 3. So, following this vision mandated minimum 50 percentage of uh, village ward and sanitation members would be women. Another most important criteria in this is uh, in membership of this village water and sanitation committee 50 percentage should be women. Here you can say about this uh, concept of gender uh, based development or you can relate with how government is giving greater focus on disadvantaged sections of society correct. Because women are considered to be water managers, women are considered to be water managers. What I said in the previous uh, first page where women is responsible for uh, 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 drinking water in the family. So, they are called as water managers. So, what this uh, mission says is in any villages when you are creating this village water and sanitation committee 50 percentage should be a women member. Okay. Next paragraph 1 and paragraph 2. So, so in paragraph 1, so including rural women as part of this committee results in self-reliance, results in self-reliance of the rural life and uh, and also another most important thing they found out is uh, around 7 lakh women under this program. 7 lakh uh, women in the program is being trained for 
टेस्टिंग वाटर क्वालिटी सो सेवन लैक वुमेन्स आर ट्रेन्ड इन रूरल इंडिया फॉर टेस्टिंग द वाटर क्वालिटी एंड दे हैव किट्स आर बीइंग प्रोवाइडेड फॉर दिस एंड इट इज सेड दैट फाइव वुमेन कैडर्स एज अ टीम इन रूरल एरियाज बीइंग क्रिएटेड especially for ensuring water quality because drinking water also requires quality standards so that has a huge impact on uh, human health so that role is given to women and we already know that in any rural families women is responsible for water and also women is responsible for the health of the family so ultimately women have a greater role in uh, rural life so again women are included in this part this clearly shows that how government is very scientifically created this program or this particular mission understanding the cultural role of uh, genders in a society so women are given the role of uh, water managers in a family and health managers so for based on that they are included in planning they are also re responsible for monitoring this particular program okay and in paragraph 2 so they are also saying that uh, in paragraph 2 how future generation is taken into the fold of this particular program and they say that around uh, 79 percentage of schools in rural areas and 73 percentage of anganwadi centers that is 17 79 percentage of schools especially rural schools and 73 percentage of anganwadis anganwadis are connected with tap water so connected with tap water so ultimately we can see that uh, future generation has taken into consideration in this program so so that is the paragraph 2 next we go for this uh, paragraph 3 paragraph 4 so paragraph 4 so paragraph 5 and paragraph 6 okay so in this paragraph 3 so why it's uh, focusing on drinking water in schools and all it's focusing on future generation the future generation well being is taken into consideration that is the reason in school we have tap water so that is one so and also it said that around 1 lakh schools 1 lakh schools have so grey water treatment grey water use and also around 93000 schools have rain water harvesting so ultimately this focusing on uh, future generation and water requirement the next most important character of this particular program is mission is transparency and accountability so under transparency and accountability that's a good governance values if you are running a country good governance demands that there should be transparency and responsibility for all the actions of the government so in this program how they are establishing that that is given in this paragraphs first and foremost thing is uh, so they have created this online platform on which all the informations that's given there so online sharing of informations regarding this mission is being done and they they also given the link there so which is not required for our preparation point of exam point of view so in that they have given the status of tap water supplies in homes schools anganwadi centers all this informations are in public domain anyone can access so they have created this online platform for sharing that information so number of uh, water taps and ho uh, houses and schools all are being shared so it creates transparency and accountability that's given in pa paragraph 3 in paragraph 4 so they also created this jal jeevan dashboard so again a online uh, uh, mechanism so showing on uh, ongoing sensor based iot pilot projects so right now government is also including this iot what is iot means internet of things we can see that in uh, advertisements and all to understand what is internet of things means uh, so there's amazon product you can uh, ask them to switch on the acs and all those things correct so that's internet of things so right now government is trying to use that in this particular uh, mission that that concept the concept of this internet of things are being used here especially for what uh, aspect they are using is uh, to check the status of uh, daily water supply so daily water supply the uh, next thing is uh, in the daily water supply quality quantity daily quality quality and uh, regularity 
So, all just by click of a mouse you get all the information correct. In a village right now what time water goes and what is the quantity of the water, what is the quality of water all based on IOT and sensors. So, sensors will be placed in the tab you can measure all these things and ultimately that comes under the dashboard which can be viewed by authorities. So, including they say chlorine, chlorination and water pressure in different phases per, cap, per, per capita supply. So, ultimately you can get real time information regarding uh, drinking water. So, that comes under uh, Jal Jeevan Mission Dashboard. We can say about this internet of things. The next thing is paragraph 5 and also testing labs. So, testing labs is also being created and uh, so, there are around our Right now in India there are around 2000 testing labs in various districts in India where you can take the waters and uh, go and give for testing. Apart from rural areas women testing it also done in the scientific laboratories. So, that can be done and uh, so that is to create the transparency. So, uh, saying that water quality is being ensured. And finally, regarding this uh, paragraph 6. So, Jaljeevan Mission financial financial data. It is also being shared in online. So, in public domain saying that what is the money being allocated and what are the funds being utilized and how many funds are being withdrawn, what are the funds are available. So, all this information in public domain. This is a concept for transparency and accountability. One is regarding the financial commitments of the government which is in public domain. Similarly, regarding the program status. So, that is also in public domain and also authorities can also use internet of things to know the status of the mission. So, all this comes under accountability and control. So, that is regarding Jaljeevan mission. Next, we go for reviving MSME that is MSME stands for micro, small and medium enterprise. We will see that. So, there are some data is given for this. So, paragraph 1 and paragraph 2. So, in paragraph 1 regarding MSME. So, MSME, there are important factual information which you can use it for introduction in your answers. So, when they say about uh, contribution for manufacturing, so MSME is manufacturing contribution. So, manufacturing contribution is around 35 percentage out of uh, 100 components manufactured in India. Assume 100 components are manufactured in India, 35 components comes from uh, MSME sectors. The next thing is export, export is around 48 percentage. So, they have greater uh, export capabilities out of uh, 100 uh, 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 things exported from India either can be product or services 48 comes from MSME. So, that is another important factual information and also MSME's contribution to GDP. So, GDP contribution of MSME is around uh, 31 percentage. So, 31 percentage in that manufacturing sector contribute around 6 percentage remaining comes from service sector. So, 6 percentage is from manufacturing. So, this was some factual information which you can use it for your answer writing regarding MSME micro, small and medium enterprises. So, uh, what is the impact on Indian economy we can relate all these things ok. And they have also given that right now we have around 33,000 registered MSMEs exporters in India. And next comes what is the definition for MSME. So, in paragraph 2 they have given some definition for uh, MSME that is micro, small and medium that is called MSME enterprises. So, investment plant and machinery or equipment less than 1 crore rupees and revenue of less than 5 crore. So, when your investment is 1 crore and revenue 5 crore then you come under micro category. And when you go for uh, small where it should be less than 10 crores, so investment 10 crores and revenue 50 crores and medium where investment is no more than 50 crores and turnover is no more than 250 crores, so investment 50 crores and revenue 250 crores. This can be a potential prelims question. So, what is micro, small and medium enterprise? It is entirely based on investment and revenue generation. Do not get confused where UPSC can play with you. How they can play with you is they can 
take this term revenue and put as profit. It's wrong. Profit is different from revenue. So keep that in mind. So these are some of the factual informations of what is micro, small and medium enterprise and the definition of the system or government. Okay. And recently we can see that uh, government is coming out this production linked incentive schemes. Again related with Atma Nirbhar Bharat. So and this is also targeted on MSME. So production linked incentives. So they want to focus on manufacturing champions. So manufacturing champions and also provide jobs, provide jobs and ultimately why we need to focus on MSME we can go for paragraph 1 because they have a huge impact on Indian economy because the contribution of GDP and uh, employment opportunities and uh, so uh, uh, export cap capabilities all are there. So production link incentives right now government introduced uh, especially during this pandemic situation focusing on making our India a manufacturing hub. So we have this tag called Make in India. So Make in India to make India as a manufacturing hub. So government is uh, especially trying to utilize this pandemic situation because uh, China is known for manufacturing. A lot of global players, a lot of global companies want to diversify their manufacturing hub because they can't rely on one country for manufacturing. So they are looking out the possibility and India is using that opportunity and their government is creating the schemes and in creating incentives or the manufacturers to focus on greater manufacturing. So that is production link incentive. So next is paragraph 2, 3 and 4 and we have paragraph 5. So in paragraph 2 in production link incentives, so they have given a target of uh, 500 US dollar of 500 billion in next 5 years to be reached under production capacity of India that is minimum output and also for that government has allocated around 1.7 lakh crore allocation financial allocation for the scheme so to in incentivize uh, in manufacturing and especially they identified 13 industries for this. So one of this uh, that industries are electronic pharmaceutical telecom networking so one is uh, electronic pharma, telecom. So these are first identified industries where uh, a manufacturer in these areas if they are able to uh, reach the targets and create the required uh, job opportunities they are given incentives for this. So and uh, money allocated for in this budget is around 1.9, 1.97 lakh crores correct. So, so that is the information which we need to focus on it and also next one is regarding MSMEs. So, government is also focusing on uh, Startup India Seed Fund Scheme. Okay, Startup India Seed Fund Scheme. So, this uh, please understand only startup can emerge as micro, small and medium enterprises. So, government is giving importance for this particular scheme. So, what is the uh, outcome of the scheme is? So, government is giving grant up to 20 lakhs. Assume that you are starting a, a uh, you are going for a startup. So, what government says under this particular scheme is they are giving, going to give 20 lakhs for validation of proof of concept. And if you have some idea and that idea seems to be commercially viable, that is one and prototype development. So, prototype development. So, your idea is transformed into some products or what you call as iterations and product testing. So, for that they give government gives 20 lakhs and next they give 50 lakhs. Once it is being done in this bracket of 20 lakhs all these things validation of proof of concept your idea is commercially viable and you come out with some product prototypes and product testing is being done and next government gives uh, 50 lakhs for market entrance. So, market entrance. So, our next thing is commercialization, commercialization of that particular product. Our next thing is uh, going for loans and all, to getting loans, okay, sealing up via convertible debentures, loans and all those things. So, ultimately you can scale the particular idea into a business idea. So, that is the thing what this scheme is going to create, that is they give 20 lakhs and 50 lakhs. 
20 lakhs to convert your idea into commercially viable product and product is being tested, prototyping is being done. Then if, if that is being successful, then we go for the next one. They have 50 lakhs. Okay. And another most important thing is in this particular uh, 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 MSME is right now PSUs and all ministries, PSUs, ministries. And we know that government is also one of the major consumers of products and services in the economy. Take example of railways or different sectors. Every year they spend a lot of money to procure products and services for their particular departments and ministries. So in that idea, so they said that uh, right now under procurement goal. So procurement goal for PSUs and ministries in India, 25 percentage should come from MSME. So there is an internal target given for government, companies and ministries. If you are going to purchase anything out of 100 pro products you are purchasing or services you are purchasing, 25 should be from M MSME. It is nothing but creating an opportunity for MSME sectors. So they can also contribute for national development and government also hand holding this MSMEs by making a commitment that any procurement 25 percentage should be from MSMEs. Okay. Next thing is, uh, there is another one, <coughs> paragraph 5, this paragraph 4, regarding this 50,000 crore funds of funds, funds of funds. So, this is another one created by the government for focusing on startup. So, they found out this micro, small and medium enterprises are uh, severe shortage of equity. Equity is nothing but financial might. And this funds of funds will be set up for this and they set the, the target of 10,000 crores. And uh, okay, operated through mother fund and few daughter funds and fund structures will be help leverage 50,000 crore of funds at daughter funds level. Okay. So they have given this concept of uh, mother of funds. So with this funds, they are going to focus on developing MSMEs and they have a com commitment around 50,000 crores under this funds. So, they can uh, propel the startup environment in India. So, if you want to put all these funds, characters and all, if you check in your uh, market terms like angel investors or uh, so they all come under this uh, venture capitalist, all come under these categories. So, uh, in market parlance, these are the terms they use it, angel investors or ma uh, venture capitalist. They are doing the same job right now what government is trying to do under these funds. So, there are two funds for promoting our uh, startup India. One is Startup India State Fund and uh, Funds of Funds, where government is going to come in 50,000 crores, especially focusing on MSME sectors. Now, another most important point regarding this MSME sectors is, uh, so we are always trying to match German model. So, German model of MSME. So, right now, whenever government want to develop our MSME sectors, the model is always German because German as a country is considered to be the manufacturing hub. Right now, China is the global manufacturer. One of the reason why they are global manufacturers because of cheap labor. But if you take Germany, that is not a situation where labor, labor uh, enjoy a very good standard of life and uh, enjoy their uh, social life also. So, India want to replicate that model rather than Chinese model. So, in Germany, so they call so they call this uh, MSME sectors as uh, term called uh, Mittelsland, uh, just wait a minute. So, Mittelstand, so this is a term given for uh, micro, small and medium enterprises in Germany. So, Mittelstand is the term used in Germany for this micro, small and medium enterprises. They have a huge influence on uh, uh, German economy and German is a manufacturing hub and especially you can see that high-end machines always come from Germany or high-end manufacturing products come from Germany. That India won't replicate it. So, this MSME model of entire India is based on this German model, middle slant. Okay. This is another extra piece of information which you want to know. Okay. Okay, we will see a question. So, this question is uh, 2019 uh, GS paper 3 question. I will give the outline of the question. The question speaks about the strategy of inclusive growth ultimately reaching the objective of inclusiveness and sustainability. So, they asked to comment on this particular statement. So, when you say strategy of inclusive growth, when you say inclusive growth means we can categorize in three broad areas, political, economic and social inclusiveness. That is a major uh, area. 
and what a strategy for inclusive growth is right now government is focusing on different dimensions of uh, inclusive growth start one of the strategies writing from decentralization and uh, technology based solutions all being done by the government to promote this inclusive growth so but the question is regarding how it is able to achieve the object of inclusiveness and sustainability when you take this inclusiveness and sustainability i said that inclusive growth can be classified into uh, uh, social political and economic so based on this particular yojana december month yojana what we discussed we can discuss two dimensions one is economic inclusiveness and social inclusiveness based on what we discussed in this articles we take this economic inclusiveness and sustainability if we take this gi tag and msme sectors what we discussed can be written as a point for this particular question how government is promoting this gi especially focusing on rural economy creating inclusiveness and sustainability similarly we can take this msme micro small and medium enterprises where government is trying to in make them a main part of mainstream development so that is also a good example of inclusiveness and sustainability that's for economic inclusiveness where we can write these two topics and when you go for social inclusiveness we can relate this jal jeevan mission so we can see that in jal jeevan mission one important criteria is inclusiveness and sustainability where we can see that local people are being trained capacity building is being done and uh, uh, planning is done at the village water sanitation committee level so all this results in inclusiveness and sustainability so these articles these three articles what we discussed can be written as two points for this question and political inclusiveness you can also write as a point so this can be a answer written to this question based on this article so i think you are able to get an idea okay thank you